It is incredibly diverse, which is why genetically it's really interesting to look at because there's a huge amount of diversity. It really is the crop that's at the basis of feeding the planet. Maize, or corn, is grown in almost every corner of the world. It dots the landscape along our highways and fills our corner stores, farm stands, and supermarkets. We use it to feed our animals and ourselves. Maize helps to feed the world. But how often do we stop to think about corn's role in sustaining life on our planet? Or even about its humble origins 10,000 years ago in Central America? So where did maize come from? It was domesticated about 10,000 years ago from a plant uh, that we call teosinte. And if you look at it, you wouldn't guess it was the wild relative of maize. So there's a tremendous uh, range of variation out there in, in teosintes. There's varieties of teosinte that are very bushy, but there's varieties that essentially are much more upright, more like a, a maize plant. They all have essentially a large number of small little kernels or ears that are distributed across the plant. Pre-Columbian Mesoamerican people, such as the Olam, Maya, and Aztec, were the first people to selectively breed teosinte. They were some of the earliest plant breeders, actively selecting and planting the seeds from teosinte plants. So as people started uh, cultivating maize and then eventually selecting on maize, what happened is that they were first selecting varieties that were easier to harvest. And they were relying on a lot of the natural variation that was in teosinte. And occasionally there may also be a new mutation they were selecting on. They continued this process of selective plant breeding over and over for hundreds of years until eventually creating a plant that more closely resembles a modern day corn cob. Essentially, the Native Americans bred on it for the next 5,000 years and really turned out to be selected on probably about 500 or 1,000 different genes to essentially make it into a crop that had a lot of yield and that also got it adapted to all these different environments. The transition from maize's wild relative to the domesticated variety is probably one of the most dramatic transformations in all of domestication history. Corn spread all over the world hundreds of years ago and has continued to develop independently in each of the geographically separate places. So the corn that is developed in China developed differently than the corn that is developed in the U.S. The corn in Africa developed differently. Part of that is, could be environment. A lot of it is also um, selection. Different cultures appreciate different things about corn depending on what you're doing with it. So a corn that makes a really good tortilla chip does not taste like sweet corn. And so it's a great plant to do genetics, but at the same time, um, it's also really cool that it's one of the major crops, and one of the most important crops in the world, so you can feed a lot of people with corn. Corn, we always just think of like corn on the cob. And then maybe sometimes, because we've been talking a lot about the news, you think about corn syrup. But corn is actually in an unbelievable number of things, and outside of the U.S., um, it is a really important food source. So. In Africa, in South and Central America, it is a substantial part of the diet. Obviously, it also feeds both human and animal populations, so again, in the same way, it's what's feeding your goat or your cow or your chicken. So if it goes away, people starve. So we need it to be able to grow in those places. We need to continue to be able to grow corn everywhere. As the planet changes and as the environment changes, we're trying to make sure that we have the tools to continue to grow corn in drier places or with less water or in a shorter season or a longer season. This genetic exploration of corn is taking place in the Buckler Lab on the Cornell University campus in Ithaca, New York. What our group is most interested in are which portions of the DNA affect how the plant grows and how it's adapted to various environments. And so what we're uh, doing is we're relating that variation to uh, how it grows out in the field and we make crosses between various corn varieties because they tell us uh, about what portions of the genome are more important than other portions of the genome. Even though the techniques that we're using to learn about this are really the same as what might help us improve corn in, in the Midwestern states, um, we can apply these same techniques to improve corn for, for the rest of the world. 
And we can also apply these same techniques once we get them mastered in corn, we can apply these to other crops. And the benefit will be that the same way you are doing uh, personalized medicine, or we are moving towards doing personalized medicine, we will try to make like personalized corn growing. So if you are able to understand how the plants react to the environment, you should be able to apply the conditions that make the plant really happy and produce the most. Smarter agriculture allows farmers to reduce their need for higher quantities of resources, like fertilizers, or water, while simultaneously allowing them to maintain or even increase their crop yields. So this, this work is important because we want to be able to figure out variation in the genomes of plants that contribute to that plant's, for instance, its ability to tolerate drought or be high yielding under, under low water conditions. So you can imagine if you're, if you're a farmer in Africa and you only have access to varieties of corn which are bred for very high water environments, but you have a very, you have a very sandy, uh, low low moisture environment. If we could figure out variation in the genome that allows plants to be tolerant of this of this really low water condition, then we could bring that, deliver that to a farmer and they could potentially have higher yields because of it. So by understanding the variation from across the entire world, we could potentially put together new combinations that um, are going to yield well in environments where we haven't planted corn in the past. And if we can improve our crops and produce more food for more people um, using fewer resources, then uh, that helps us reduce the environmental impact of agriculture, um, which can make a big difference in the world in terms of carbon emissions and, and land use and, and helping address the food shortage problems that might happen once our world population increases.